So, I'm fine. So, um, so my name is Emery Thomas. I'm a modern workplace consultant at Avanade. And I'm also a Microsoft MVP for SharePoint and M365 development. And today uh, I'm going to talk to to you um, like uh, about um, how to extend the PNP modern search solution to add a like button on search results. So basically, what I want to do is to be able to like uh, content search results directly from the search results instead of the like the library or the list, uh, what you can normally do in SharePoint. So first, a quick introduction uh, or reminder of what is the PNP Modern Search solution. Uh, so it's it's a set of SharePoint Online web parts uh, that you can use to create um, highly flexible and personalized search-based experiences. So basically, you have a set of web parts, and uh, each web part has uh, a lot of parameters yet that you can set to fit your needs. But what's even more interesting is that you can also um, create some uh, more advanced features um, using customizations. So you can um, you can create like you can use basic customizations using HTML, uh, CSS, and handlebars, uh, for example, to uh, customize search layouts. But you can also uh, create even more advanced features uh, using SPFX solutions. Uh, and for this uh, for this demo, I will show you um, how to create a custom web component using an SPFX solution. So first, uh, let's start with a demo. So I'm going to share. Um, so a SharePoint page, an empty SharePoint page, on which I will start uh, by adding the search results web part. Oops. Okay, so as you can see, I have uh, many web parts from the PNP Modern Search Solution, but I want to select the search results solution. I will do some basic configurations to make it work, I will select the SharePoint search, um, select one additional property that I want to display, which is the last modified time. And then I will also use a simple search query here. So basically, I want to retrieve uh, pages uh, from two different uh, SharePoint sites. So I'm going to apply this query and there. So here um, I have my pages that are displayed uh, using this built-in layout, which is great. But the thing um, with this uh, built-in layout, sorry, is that it's no, you cannot highly customize uh, built-in layouts. So for, that is why I will use a simple custom layout uh, so that I will be able to add my custom web component to this custom layout. So let me select custom here, and then I will go there and just, you know, use this layout that I've built. It's basically just some standard uh, HTML and CSS uh, with a bit of handlebar expressions for the logic, but quite simple. So we'll copy it and paste it here and save. OK, so basically I have the same results displayed a bit more differently, but OK, this is, um, this is it. And now what I want to do is to add my custom web component uh, to the results. So I'm going to switch again to VS Code. So here, this is my component um, with some uh, attributes that I will need to make my component work. I will copy it and then go back to the layout. 
And as you can see here, I have um, each handlebar expression, meaning that for each search result, I want to display it like that. So since I want my web component to appear on each uh, result, I want to insert my component here. And you can just uh, quickly uh, notice that uh, this layout is uh, using uh, this web component, which is a built-in web component uh, to manage the pagination. But here I'm adding my custom web component and I'm going to go ahead and update my layout with that and save. So my web component uh, is still not there because I have one more step to do. Because basically I need to say the to tell the web part, okay, um, I've added this web component, but this web component is from this SPFX uh, solution that I uploaded on my tenant catalog. So to do that, and that's why it's very easy to extend the PNP more and search solution. I just go to the last page of the property pane, and here I will add the uh, the ID, the uh, GUID of my SPFX solution. I will enable it, save, and publish the page, and my component should appear. Yes. Okay. So I have it. So basically, it displays uh, whether I've already liked the page and how many people liked it. So for instance, if I open in another tab the violin page, I can see the same data as in my search results. And here, if I click on the Like button, it will unlike the page. And if I refresh my value, violin page here, the, uh, I no longer like the page. And I can do that for each, uh, each page that appear in my search results. So that's it for the demo. Uh, now let's um, move on uh, a bit. Uh, in the code. So first, um, to create um, a custom web component, you need to create a SPFX library component. And it's important that you check that uh, the library that you're creating has the same uh, SPFX version of the SPFX version used by the PNP modern search solution that you have deployed on your tenant. Because otherwise, it might work, but you might also have some issues. For the rest of the code demo, let me switch to VS Code, because I guess it will be clearer. So here is my library uh, solution. So here I have um, my main entry point of the library, which is implementing the extensible library um, interface, which I'm getting from the modern search extensibility library. Um, here I'm declaring the service key property and providing some constructor uh, with a scope instance. So basically, I'm doing that uh, to be able to use the SharePoint context uh, within my web component, uh, which is very useful. And then um, I'm providing uh, an implementation of all methods that you can use uh, for extensibility. For example, if you want to uh, build a custom layout, you can use the get custom layout uh, method. But since today I don't want to build a layout, I can just return an empty array. But for the get custom web component method, here I want to return my, uh, my web component, which is a like result component. So 
if we go to the like result web component class, so as you can see here, it extends the base web component class. Uh, you have a few uh, okay, a few things to to get the context. You also have uh, the resolve attributes method, which is really useful because what uh, it does, um, it will uh, get uh, the HTML attributes of my component, uh, those one, and it will pass it to my React component as props. So very useful to, to get data uh, and to pass it to the web component. And then it will render a React component. And if we move down to the React component itself, so it's a pretty simple uh, React component. So basically what I want to do first when loading uh, the search results is to check how many likes uh, are there uh, who liked the, the page. And then I also have a method uh, to like whenever a user click on the like button to update the like count and uh, to change the basically the icon of the like button uh, depending of if the user liked or not the, the page. And finally, uh, the render part uh, where basically I manage how uh, everything is displayed. So the logic itself is pretty simple, but I think it's really nice to like, to be able to to extend this uh, already great solution uh, in such an, an easy way. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much, and back to you, Paul. Thank you.